So as we have seen, there are some limitations in terms of what can be represented. To get a better understanding of why we even have such limitations, it's important to remember that on any digital computer, everything that can be represented is represented using binary digits, zeros and ones. So to understand this, think about how we count. We count with the 10 decimal digits 0 to 9. So if we're counting from 0, so we do 0, 1, 2 and so on. Finally when we hit 9, we have run out of decimal digits. So the next highest number we have to create using a combination of the previous digits. So we write 1, 0 and of course we read that as 10 uh, and that's the one that comes after 9. And after 1, 0, we write 1, 1, 1, 2, and so on, all the way up to 9, 9, which is 99. And then again, we have run out of digits. So we play the same sort of trick we did when we ran out of digits earlier. We write 1, 0, 0, and that we read as 100. And then we proceed. And you're, of course, comfortable with uh, counting in base 10. Now, a computer doesn't count in base 10. A computer counts in base 2 using the two binary digits 0 and 1. So how does that counting work? Well, you start with 0 and then you proceed to 1 just like you did before. But at this point, the computer has run out of binary digits or bits. So it does the same trick we did when we run out of digits. Just like we move from 9 to 1, 0, the computer moves from 1 to 1, 0. And then it proceeds to 1, 1, but that's just like hitting 99. So at this point, you move to 1, 0, 0, just like we did. So the idea is the same, but you hit these limits more frequently when you only have two digits. But the idea is exactly the same. So this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, and so on. We can represent our numbers, our integers, the ones that we're familiar with, we can represent those at least in bits. So as an example, if I wanted to see what is 101 in base 2, I could give the, uh, give the Python REPL the sequence 101. I put it in quotes and we will understand this later on. We will say take this sequence of uh, bits, 101, Treat it as a number in base 2, not in base 10, and it will tell us that that is the integer 5 that you and I are familiar with. And you can check this. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So every integer in base 10 can be represented internally as a sequence of zeros and ones. It's important to remember that it's the same integer 5. It's just the way we say it. If we're talking to uh, a human, since we are comfortable with uh, understanding numbers in base 10, we will say 5. We will represent it to each other in this form. But internally, the computer is happier with representing everything as zeros and ones. In fact, that's the only thing it can represent. So internally, the number 5 is represented as a sequence of zeros and ones, specifically this sequence. Now, it's not just integers that are represented as a sequence of zeros and ones. Everything that I can do on my digital computer has to be eventually represented as zeros and ones. So here's a very colorful example. I'm trying to represent a particular shade of brown. And the way I represent colors is using three integers, not just one. So there is some amount of red, some 110 units of red, and some amount of green, 87 units of green, and 50 units of blue that I have mixed to form this particular shade of brown. So those three integers, I can convert internally into zeros and ones, and that is how this color is represented internally. Now, once again, when it comes to showing it 
to a human being, rather than showing it as a sequence of zeros and ones, it shows it to us in, as a color. Just like rather than showing us this internal representation of zeros and ones as bits, it shows that number to us in the form of a, an easy to understand integer. So I hope you see that internally everything is zeros and ones, but the way it is externally presented to us is in the form of something that is easier for us to deal with. By the way, these three numbers, you can internally glue them together and write them in this form, which is the same three numbers, but represented using a different base, something called hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is counting in base 16. And this leading portion 6e actually corresponds to the number 110, 5, 7 corresponds to 57, and 3, 2 corresponds to 50. You can check this in the REPL. You can give it the string 6e, the sequence of uh, digits, hexadecimal digits 6 followed by e, and say, hey, treat this as something in base 16, and it will tell you, oh, for you as a human in, who's comfortable with decimal, that's the number 110. So just like the digits in decimal are 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 9, the digits that, uh, in hexadecimal are 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 9, that's 10 digits, but also A, B, C, D, E, and F. So 6E is some number. 6E plus 1 is 6F. And what do you do after 6F? Well, there are no more hexadecimal digits. So you do the same thing that we do when we hit 69, we go to 70. So after 6F will come 70. The reason it's displayed in this form in hexadecimal is sometimes when you are doing certain types of programming, for example, web development, you want to represent certain specific colors and it's easy to represent them in hexadecimal rather than thinking of them in terms of uh, three different uh, decimal numbers. So hexadecimal is another way of uh, representing the same information, some in this case numeric information. And as you can see, colors are represented as numbers. And in fact, everything is represented as numbers. This PPT slide that I am creating, this video that I am recording, all of these are internally represented as a sequence of zeros and ones.